monster. The Jeffrey Dahmer story. Let's talk about it. What's good guys, it's your boy you got the Savage back again for another review. I uh, obviously you know the title of the video and stuff like that. It's been a couple of days since I uh, finished the series and then today again I watched another episode. This is this was one where I really wanted to let it fester for a little bit, watch the last episode again, then give you guys my honest review. Um, I'm going to come out and say straight away, um, regardless of what the story is about, Evan Peters in this role as Jeffrey Dahmer and as somebody who has seen the original Dahmer interviews and countless documentaries, he did an incredible job. Um, sound weird to say, I think a lot of people are struggling on how to say that someone done an incredible job of somebody who was so disgusting because usually when people do great jobs in acting, they're acting on a uh, fictional character where this person is is 100% real. Um, but he, he he did incredible. Um, he got he re I don't know how he got into the role as such. Um, I'll be doing a reaction to his interview very soon, so um, we'll chop that up there as well. But he the mannerisms, the the accent, the uh, everything, the way he walked, the little details. He he got them perfect. Um, and and obviously there's parts that in the show that nobody would have seen in real life other than the people who were there. And then there's obviously parts from interviews and, and courts, courtroom stuff where we've all seen it. Um, now, the program itself, it's probably the best, it, it's probably the best way I've seen the story be told out of anything. I've seen, I think there's a movie of what's called My Friend Jeffrey Dahmer, there was the one back in the day and then obviously there's all these other little low budget ones as well. Um, this really focused on, it wasn't the usual serial killer, let's get from the get in the mind of a serial killer and let's glorify what they've done. This was pretty much all from the point of view of the victims and the witnesses. And of course it's a Jeffrey Dahmer story, but it really doesn't glorify anything he does. It doesn't really show much of what he does in terms of the murders. Um, they they leave it up in, in this weird way where they leave it down to audio cues and ambient sounds of hearing stuff what's going on and just seeing the aftermath of the the victims or the weapons, um, which made it a little bit more eerie. If I'm honest, um, he he was incredible, and I wouldn't be surprised if he got an award for it. Oh, and I would and I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't. Because it's kind of hard giving somebody an award for something like this because the victims' families are still alive and they'd have to relive it. And Obviously, history is history and there's victims of everything in the world where they're always going to have to recount the history in some way. So I'm just glad that Netflix and the director didn't glorify it. Um, they really showcased the, the witnesses. Now... Um, I'd say that uh, I think it was Molly Ringwald and Richard Jenkins, obviously. Um, she plays the stepmom and the dad. Great job. And uh, Nisi and Ash as well. I think if there was going to give a supporting role award, she would get it. She played um, Glenda Cleveland, the neighbour. Um, and she was great. She, she was great. It was very... It was historically accurate to a point. There was parts where they... Well, in every movie or TV show, they have to dramatise something because otherwise you don't really end up... You can't really structure your, your show around stuff that you don't know completely. But pretty much from what I know of the documentaries and books and stuff from the past, there's not much they, they got wrong in it. I think um, Glenda Cleveland herself didn't live in the apartment next door to Jeffrey Dahmer, but she lived in the, the building next to their building. Um, but what I think they'd done there, there was another neighbour... Who was who lived opposite Jeffrey Dahmer, and I think what they've done is they took her story and used Glen Glenda Cleveland's name and mashed up that little part of the story, because that person did hear the noises and stuff. And I think if I remember that lady, um, she said at one point that she believes that she had um, consumed human flesh because she had took meat from Jeffrey Dahmer back in the day. Um, so yeah, it was a bit mad. Um, they got 
from what I've seen of the scenery and the setting they used, everything looked accurate. I don't know how they... I mean, I know how they've done it. Those pictures and stuff, what they could have used um, to reference, which they would have done. That's what you do in movies and that. But it was so accurate, it was kind of... You know what I mean? And it was one of the most eerie things I've, eerie things I've watched. Uh, there's no slow build-up to it. I think the first scene of the, the, the show, if I'm correct, is a scene of his like kitchen side with a drill with blood all over it and like pills and chloroform and all of that over the cat that, that's how it starts and it does run through like a flashback kind of thing which for me tells the story better but i could understand if a few people don't like that there's so much time jumps within it um because if you like if you went to make a drink quickly or something or if you sneezed and missed that the date come up on the screen you'd be very confused looking at it thinking what's happened here um but apart from that there's no negatives for me um obviously the the main negative is that this guy was a scumbag but but they told the story very well um i think it kind of sets a blueprint for what going forward when people are telling stories of serial killers and such it's a, it's a blueprint of how to tell it without glorifying because a lot of the times usually we'll have an a narration from the character themselves and they would be telling you why they've done this and why they've done that. They didn't do any of that in this. It wasn't narrated. It was the witnesses and every one of those victims. Uh, well, nearly every one of them. I think I know there's like 17 actual victims and then you could count the witnesses as victims. If you, had, if you had to be around that, you are a victim as well in some way, mentally. Um, there was bits in it where I knew what already happened. So it wasn't a shot to me waiting for what's going to happen next. But at the same time, these crimes were never on video CCTV. So they've just made up a representation of what they thought would have happened. And I'm telling you, it really put me in a place where I felt like, no, this shit is, re this, this is exactly what happened. Like it feel every little bit. From what I know, the only parts what I know that didn't happen, there was a scene where um, one of his victims got away, he got drugged, then the grandma took the guy to the, stay downstairs with him, talking to the bus stop in the morning. I know that didn't happen in real life. The, the man did escape, he did get um, drugged and stuff, but the grandma wasn't to do with that. I think the man just said he grew up, he, he woke up in the hospital. Um, and apart from that, just the court case that he had glasses on, when in, in the real court case he didn't. I'm telling you, that's how accurate it was. And there's probably going to be backlash from certain things. I, I think I sent a, an article not long ago, it said backlash from LGBT com community or something like that. I don't understand why there would be backlash because it's it's a historical thing what's happened. It's not like Netflix are choosing to pick on gay people in the show. This is what Jeffrey Dahmer done. Is, it's like if black people had some backlash or... In fact, there wasn't even all black victims. I know the strong amount of them were, but if they started to have a backlash now, it'd be stupid. It'd be like, the guy's dead now in real life, so... Um, yeah, uh, Evan Peters, I remember watching his interview before about American Horror Story and him saying he had to go to a dark place and that was a few years ago, he's got, he's obviously older now. I don't know, we'll see when we react to the interview, but I don't know how you get to that place. It doesn't feel like a role you can snap out of if you want to do it properly, so it feels like you'd have to put yourself... And I'm not saying like you turn yourself into a flipping serial killer, but I'm saying you put yourself in like dark situations for a couple of months. You you go to work, and then when you leave work, you go home in, in a dark room and just read up on Jeffrey Dahmer, and you go to bed and you go back to work. I can. It's the only way I can see people. I can't imagine playing Jeffrey Dahmer, and everyone says cut. Will we resume tomorrow at work? And you get in the house, and then your missus says, "How was your day at work?" And you give her a kiss, and you know you do regular stuff. I can't, I can't see a point where that happens, but we'll see. We'll we'll watch the interview together. Uh, it's, I know it's not a long interview, so that'll be coming up next. I'll probably put these videos out together so when you finish watching this, you can go straight onto it. Um, but yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer's story, a monster, great show. Um, yeah, it's mad. It's mad that it's a real story, and the worst thing is it's not even. I mean. I don't know how you judge who's the worst serial killer, but I've heard stories worse than Jeffrey Dahmer. I mean, yeah, I guess you count it on who killed more people or something, because I, I know there's more people that killed more people than Jeffrey Dahmer. I, I don't know. Honestly, 
I don't get scared of anything. I've said this on the channel loads of times. I don't get I don't get scared of anything. I'm not horrified by anything. But out of all the horror movies I've watched in the last 15 years and stuff, this was the most chilling thing I probably watched. The most horrifying thing in this whole show to me though, <laughs> this is I'm being serious, is there was a scene where they they recall the John Wayne Gacy, what he did, and I didn't know this was coming up in the show. And I didn't know they were gonna show him in his clown costume. Shit me up a little bit. I can't lie. That's that's the most. That, I don't like clowns in it. So that's the that's, that's, that's the most I got from that. Um, the story's not slow at all or anything like that. There is a part where the story picks up, and it becomes more intense. And I would say episode six. Um, let me get the guy's name because I definitely don't want to be disrespectful to any of the flipping um, any of the victims. I think ah, his name's not on here. Let me. So, Tony Hughes, episode six, is re it recalls the victim, Tony Hughes, who was a deaf man. When you pick up on that and go forward, then it gets, that That's that for me was where it got me. But I mean, I've reviewed this long enough now, I've been over 10 minutes, so I apologise for the long time. But of course, I wanted to give the show its flowers, pay the victim some respect. And yeah, and just a little message to people out there. I've seen some stuff, like comment sections and stuff where people talking about if Jeffrey Dahmer was alive, I would have wrote him letters and if Jeffrey Dahmer was alive, whatever, he's a good man, he didn't really, he didn't want to hurt the victim, stop it, <laughs> just stop it, because him, he, him himself said he wasn't a good man for these things, so just stop, this is what's wrong with the world these days, you'd think that something like this would shed light on what really happened and said, damn, the victims really deserve more grace than what they got because everyone's always glorified Jeffrey Dahmer as the serial killer, sent him letters, people want to, oh, it's a great Jeffrey Dahmer. But now you got, I forgot about this generation. I really forgot about the world was living in when I was watching this. And then when I finished watching it and looked on Twitter and I've realised that the psychopaths are really out there still. And I'm like, yeah, of course they are because everybody who would have written to Jeffrey Dahmer in 1992, 1993 and all that, I think he died in, like, I might be wrong, 1991, say that time. They're still alive. Those motherfuckers are still alive. We need to find them fuckers and get rid of them. You know, like that. Be your savage. Comment, like, subscribe, and share. Run.